Hello family, we bless the name of the Lord. We thank him for all he's done for us. Today, as I wrap up on our sessions on prayer, I want to share with you practical ways that I think that we can all develop our prayer life because I am mindful that many of us may be at different stages in our maturity with the Lord. And sometimes, you know, even if somebody has been in church for so long, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person might be very great at praying. Prayer is something that we're told to do. As I've read over the last few days in various ways, we've realized that the disciples were told to pray. Jesus taught them to pray. Jesus expected them to pray. Our Lord and Savior himself spent many hours praying. In fact, the Bible says that there were times when he prayed throughout the night. There are some of us who have come to that place where we can actually devote ourselves to praying through the night. There are some of us who may not even be able to pray for even 10 minutes. But I just want to say that just as we devote ourselves as human beings to feed ourselves, to do specific things so that we will grow, so that we will mature, so that we will live, so that we will not starve to death. There are particular things that we also need to do if we want to develop our prayer life and be consistent with our prayer. Because 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 17 says, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unseasoned and persistent in prayer. Some other version says, pray without ceasing. And often people kind of ask the question, how can I pray without ceasing? How can I pray throughout the whole day? But there are people who have trained themselves to the point where when they have a moment by themselves and they're not engaging with anybody or engaging in anything that needs their full and mental attention, They've been able to train themselves to get to the point where they are able to pray most times. And in fact, I do know of uh, um, someone who says that she's actually able to pray. Even she's trained herself to the point where her spirit is so sharp that even in her sleep, she knows times when she's praying in her sleep. And I've experienced something similar before. So I know that it is not a lie. But if you have that prayer life, you're consistently, even you, it will amaze you that sometimes even in your dream, you find yourself praying in your dream. And so today I just want to share some practical tips based on my own personal experience and what I think that that um, even the word of God shows us. So you'll find that in scripture, there's so many examples of prayer. People's prayer is recorded in scriptures. One of the reasons why I believe that is done is so that we'll be able to see and to learn from other people's prayer so that we can apply that to ourselves. So we know, for example, the Lord's Prayer. Many people pray that, which is great, but I don't think that Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer just to say that this is the only prayer that you should pray. Because if it was the case, the Bible wouldn't tell us that we're to pray with all kinds of prayer with all with petition and so knowing that there are all kinds of prayer one of the things that I do know for certain is that when we look through the psalms most of the psalms are actually prayers the psalms for prayer that says it's a prayer for help there's psalms that says it's a prayer for distress there's some that says that prayer for um, for protection from secret enemies and so on so I would encourage you that if you're at that place where you feel that you don't know how to pray or what to pray find scriptures where people have prayed read through those scriptures and you can even use that as the basis for your own prayer so you might take um psalm 35 as an example where the person is praying and as you're praying this you personalize this and you make it sound like this is you standing and agreeing with what the psalm is prayed and praying that to god As you do that, you will find that there comes times where a thought will come to mind and you might actually say, actually, I want to add this to what the psalmist prayed because that is to do with your own personal situation. So suddenly, maybe if you are praying for five minutes, because you've now got sort of like an eight in your prayer, you might be able to pray for 10 minutes. 
another practical thing to do is to surround yourself with people who pray and to make sure that you find yourself at places where there are prayer meetings and gatherings going on. And often the place to start from is your church. So if you're in a church where prayer is embedded in many of the activities, participate in it. There are some people who think that prayer ministry or prayer is for people who are in quotes, prayer warriors or people who have specifically been assigned to pray. We all as Christians have been called to pray. So I would encourage you to make sure that if there's your church has an active prayer ministry or there are people, there's opportunities for there to be prayer, get involved in that. And on this note, if you find yourself in a church where maybe prayer is not even something that really happens on a Sunday, because I have been to churches where in the service, from the time the service starts to the time the service ends, it is only the person who's leading the service who prays and nobody else has opportunity to pray. So if you find yourself in a church like that, and there's no other opportunity for people to participate in prayer during the course of the week, then I would encourage you to find a ministry Ask God to lead you if you don't know one, one, where they've got their ministry resources or maybe their teachings or their services online, or even if it's an individual who has a, it's somebody who prays a lot and shares their prayer, or you'll find their recordings on YouTube and they are praying. Tune into those sorts of things because as you listen to other people pray, or if it's a prayer gathering and people that the saints are offering prayer, you can participate in that because what that does is one, it helps you to learn from others in terms of how to pray. And it also helps you to um, discipline yourself as far as making time and setting time aside for prayer. Sometimes the reason why people don't want to get involved in prayer in church is because they feel it is a sacrifice. They've got to make time. They've got to devote time and they don't feel that taking time away from something else is a distraction. But the thing is, the devil would want us to get distracted so that we do not pray. The other reason why it's important to get yourself involved in prayer ministry and in people, opportunities to pray where believers are, is that also you get to actually get the opportunity to ask people to pray for you. And sometimes when we're going through things and we feel that maybe we don't know how to pray we can rely on other believers to pray for us and sometimes even as that person is praying and you're listening to what they're saying it helps you to actually discover that actually if I'm praying for myself I can say this or I can say that I know that works because throughout my Christian life I've had opportunity of being around people who have prayed Um, I've had opportunity of being Um, in services where prayer has gone on for so long and that was how I developed my discipline as far as prayer is concerned it doesn't mean that I've arrived it means that I'm working on it where I was around the age of nine as far as prayer is concerned when I accepted the Lord as my savior is not the same place that I am now I find prayer more easier now I find prayer more enjoyable now because over the years I've intentionally put myself in situations where I have had to discipline myself. An example is where I, as part of my scripture union, when I was in secondary school, we would wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, which was a time that we all had to wake up. And at five, those of us in scripture union, on a particular day, we had a prayer meeting in our dormitories and we would pray. And being a, a scripture union leader at the time, I would have to go from dormitory to dormitory to kind of check that people were praying. It wasn't easy, but all of those things basically helped to develop that discipline and commitment. And so fast forward, going to a church where I'm told to be at prayer at 6 a.m. in the morning, I'm, I was able to do it because of the experience that I'd had even in secondary school. And also when you pray and you see God answer your prayer and you realize that actually the only way that you can see God's power manifesting your life is through prayer is that when you have opportunities like that, you actually count it a blessing because it's easier when you're praying amongst a gathering of people than when you're praying by yourself people spare you on and so on 
And so I remember years ago, I used to go to this prayer 6 a.m. in the morning. I didn't used to drive either. A friend of mine would give me a lift or I would rely on public transport. But it meant that I would get there a little bit after six because of the fact that I couldn't get a bus earlier. Um, and so I would I did this for a few years, you know, and all of those things basically helps to develop your discipline for prayer. So if you then find yourself at home having to pray by yourself, it's easier because you've actually traveled even a long distance to get to a gathering of where believers are praying. Another thing I would also encourage you to do is that throughout your day. If especially you find that it's difficult for you to set maybe an hour aside throughout your day, find specific times where you feel that you can actually tune your mind and decide that intentionally I'm going to pray at such and such a time. So an example, which is something I found and I do from time to time is when I find that I'm sitting or commuting from one place to another and it's going to take me about an hour and that hour my mind will be wandering and all sorts of things because I can't do anything. There are times when I might decide that, okay, of all the list of things that I want to pray, maybe in the morning as I'm en route to whether it's my school drop off or whatever, I would pray about a specific thing. When I'm going to do my school pickup, I would pray about a specific thing. And then I find different other areas or times within the day that I might pray about one or two different things. The reason why I know that that is a practical thing to do is, for example, assume this, that if you commute for two hours a day and you decide to dedicate 10 minutes of that commute time to praying, if you do that Monday to Friday, that'll be 50 minutes that you would have dedicated to praying concerning a specific thing. And it will amaze you what that 50 minute prayer will do. As opposed to if you said I don't have time at all, then pretty much you've used time to commute regardless, but you've not been productive in that time. And I know that works because I want to share a testimony. A few years ago, I used to drop off one, my older child and between him and dropping my second one, there was a gap. And so I'd have to wander around the shops and do all sorts of things just to try and while away time until I could drop off my other son. Around that season, I was looking for a job as well and so on. And so what I decided to do is that between the time that I was, I dropped off my older one and I was waiting for the, to drop off the second one, while I was walking around, I would be praying concerning this job opening that I wanted God to give me. I didn't know the kind of job I was looking for. I just knew that it had to be a specific type of job, something I will enjoy and so on. One day I went into the shop, it was a Christian shop, and saw a book that drew my attention. It had been written by a Christian um, author and was reading this book. As I was reading the book, I realized that he actually worked for a Christian organization that I knew nothing of. And um, one day on my way to this 6 a.m. prayer, I sat in the bus and I was amazed at some of the things this man was talking about, about some of the things he had done for the kingdom, putting his life in danger. And in my head, I just said, God, you know, one day I'd like to meet this person. Um, long story short, one day out of the blue, God just laid it on my heart to visit this organization's website. I did that, checked if they had a vacancy. They did have a vacancy. Some of the skills that they were looking for, I had it. Some of it, I didn't have it. Fast forward, I applied for the job. Certain things had to be changed. Eventually, by God's grace, I got the job. And on the day that I was meant to start that job, as I walked into the building, guess who I saw? The man who wrote that book that I picked up, the man who so moved me by what he had written in that book that I said to God in my head on my way to a 6 a.m. prayer that God helped me meet this person. And as I saw him, I couldn't help it. The first thing as he introduced himself, he said, hello. I said to him, you know what? I actually asked God to help me meet you. And I know for a certainty that that job was a job that God gave me because of that prayer that I was praying. In that time that I was whiling around town, aim, it, sometimes it looks so miserable, just in the cold and everything else, whiling away time, waiting to drop off my child. But as I was praying that, those prayers, God was listening. And that is why I would encourage you, particularly if you're a mother, you've got children, you've got all these child commitments, and sometimes you feel overwhelmed. You're thinking, how can I even make a day and, uh, uh, you know, set aside time to pray? Find moments throughout your day, even if you're cooking, even if you're washing, 
be intentional and just make a list of the things you want to pray about and find different times in the day that you can say at this time or between this time and that time, I'm going to pray concerning this. It doesn't have to be lengthy prayers. And then on those occasions where God gives you opportunity to be a part of a prayer group, take advantage of that opportunity. Then the day God gives you opportunity, 